The book of Jeremiah is a significant text in the Hebrew Bible and the Christian Old Testament. It is traditionally attributed to the prophet Jeremiah, who lived in the 7th and 6th centuries BCE in the kingdom of Judah. Jeremiah is considered one of the major prophets in both Jewish and Christian traditions. The book is divided into 52 chapters and contains a combination of prose, poetry, and historical narrative. Jeremiah's prophecies primarily concern the impending destruction of Judah and Jerusalem due to their disobedience and idolatry. He warns the people of the consequences of their actions and calls them to repentance. The story behind the creation of the book of Jeremiah is quite intriguing. Unlike some other prophets whose writings were compiled after their deaths, Jeremiah played a more active role in the transmission of his prophecies. Jeremiah was an Israelite priest residing in Jerusalem during the waning years of the southern kingdom of Judah, emerging as a prophetic figure. Jeremiah dictated his prophecies to his scribe Baruch ben Neria, who then wrote them down on a scroll or scrolls. This partnership between Jeremiah and Baruch is depicted in the book itself. Jeremiah's prophecies were recorded over a period of several decades, covering the reigns of various kings of Judah, including Josiah, Jehoiakim, Jehoiachin, and Zedekiah. In chapter 36, we learn that after preaching in Jerusalem for 20 years, God instructed Jeremiah to gather all his teachings, poems, and writings into a written form. Jeremiah enlisted the help of his scribe, Baruch, to write down and organize everything into a scroll, Baruch also collected various stories about Jeremiah and wove them together. This is why the book reads like a collection of collections, an anthology. The arrangement aims to portray Jeremiah as a messenger of God's justice and mercy. The book starts with God appointing Jeremiah as a prophet with a twofold mission. He is to prophesy not only to Israel, but also to other nations. His words will both condemn and warn Israel of God's impending judgment, but they will also offer hope for the future by promising restoration and renewal. The opening chapters of Jeremiah encapsulate Jeremiah's writings before the exile. At its core, these writings convey the message that Israel has strayed from its covenant with God, violating the terms outlined in the Torah in numerous ways. They have embraced the worship of Canaanite gods, constructing idolatrous shrines throughout the land. Jeremiah employs the metaphor of idolatry as adultery, using language that describes Israel's unfaithfulness and betrayal of God by turning to other deities. Moreover, Jeremiah consistently denounces the corruption among Israel's leaders, the priests, kings, and prophets who have deviated from their responsibilities and become morally bankrupt. The abandonment of the Torah and the covenant has resulted in widespread social injustice within Israel. The most vulnerable members of Israelite society, widows, orphans, and immigrants are being exploited, a direct violation of the laws outlined in the Torah. Israel's leaders have shown a lack of concern for these injustices disregarding their responsibilities to uphold justice and protect the marginalized. A pivotal moment where these themes converge is found in chapter 7, known as Jeremiah's Temple Sermon. Jeremiah chapter 7, verses 1 to 15, NIV. This is the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Stand at the gate of the Lord's house and there proclaim this message. Hear the word of the Lord, all you people of Judah who come through these gates to worship the Lord. This is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says. Reform your ways and your actions, and I will let you live in this place. Do not trust in deceptive words and say, This is the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord. If you really change your ways and your actions and deal with each other justly, if you do not oppress the foreigner, the fatherless, or the widow, and do not shed innocent blood in this place, and if you do not follow other gods to your own harm, 
then I will let you live in this place, in the land I gave your ancestors forever and ever. But look, you are trusting in deceptive words that are worthless. Will you steal and murder, commit adultery and perjury, burn incense to Baal, and follow other gods you have not known, and then come and stand before me in this house, which bears my name, and say, We are safe, safe to do all these detestable things. Has this house, which bears my name, become a den of robbers to you? But I have been watching, declares the Lord. Go now to the place in Shiloh, where I first made a dwelling for my name, and see what I did to it, because of the wickedness of my people, Israel. While you were doing all these things, declares the Lord, I spoke to you again and again, but you did not listen. I called you, but you did not answer. Therefore what I did to Shiloh, I will now do to the house that bears my name, the temple you trust in, the place I gave to you and your ancestors. I will thrust you from my presence, just as I did all your fellow Israelites, the people of Ephraim. Despite the Israelites outwardly worshipping God in the temple, they continue to engage in idolatry and even adopt the abhorrent Canaanite practice of child sacrifice outside its walls. Jeremiah delivers an unpopular proclamation, God's judgment is imminent. He warns that God will destroy his own temple and punish Israel by unleashing an enemy from the north upon them. This message challenges the Israelites' false sense of security and calls for genuine repentance and adherence to God's covenant. As the narrative progresses, it becomes clear that the army Jeremiah speaks of is the mighty empire of Babylon, chosen by God to conquer Jerusalem. This culmination of events sets the stage for a significant transition in chapter 25. Despite God's warnings and calls for repentance, Israel remains unfaithful. In the first year of Nebuchadnezzar's reign as king of Babylon, God instructs Jeremiah to declare that Babylon's armies will march against Israel and its neighboring nations, subjecting them to conquest and exile for a duration of 70 years. Jeremiah vividly portrays Babylon as a cup filled to the brim with God's righteous anger, ready to pour out judgment upon Israel for its injustices and idolatry. Jeremiah chapter 25 verses 15 to 16 NIV. This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, said to me. Take from my hand this cup filled with the wine of my wrath and make all the nations to whom I send you drink it. When they drink it, they will stagger and go mad because of the sword I will send among them. Thus, chapter 25 serves as a pivotal point in the book's structure as it foreshadows the impending Babylonian attack and sets the stage for subsequent events. The narrative unfolds in two main sections. Chapters 26 to 45 focus on Israel's experience leading up to and during the Babylonian invasion, while chapters 46 to 51 address the judgment upon other nations. In the section concerning Israel, Jeremiah pleads with the people to repent and return to God, warning them of the impending disaster Despite his efforts, the leaders of Israel persist in rejecting his message. The narrative culminates in the siege and destruction of Jerusalem by Babylon, accompanied by accounts of Jeremiah's persecution and eventual abduction to Egypt by a faction of rebellious Israelites. These stories illustrate the consequences of Israel's disobedience and the prophet's unwavering commitment to delivering God's message amidst adversity. In the midst of the somber tales of destruction and judgment, Jeremiah offers a glimmer of hope for Israel's future. Drawing upon Moses' prophecy in Deuteronomy 30, Jeremiah envisions God's enduring commitment to his people, even in the face of exile and disobedience. He foretells a time when God will renew his covenant with Israel and transform their hearts, inscribing his laws not on tablets of stone, but within their very beings. Through this transformation, 
Israel will be healed of their rebellion and enabled to wholeheartedly love and obey God. Jeremiah's message extends beyond restoration to include the promise of Israel's return to the land and the advent of a Messiah from the line of David. This Messiah will serve as a beacon of light, drawing all nations to recognize and worship Israel's God as the one true deity. In Jeremiah's vision, hope shines brightly amid the darkness, offering assurance of God's faithfulness and the ultimate fulfillment of his promises to his people. Following this, there is a significant collection of poems depicting how God will utilize Babylon to execute judgment upon the surrounding nations, Egypt, Philistia, Moab, Edom, Ammon, Damascus, and Hazor. Surprisingly, the longest poems are reserved for the end, focusing on God's impending judgment upon Babylon itself. While Babylon serves as an instrument of God's justice, Jeremiah underscores that God does not condone their violence and idolatry. Therefore, Babylon too will face divine judgment for its pride and injustice. Despite being used by God, Babylon's actions are not endorsed, and Jeremiah condemns their wrongdoing. These poems illustrate God's impartiality and insistence on justice, even towards the nations he employs to accomplish his purposes. The book concludes with a recounting of Babylon's final assault on Jerusalem, resulting in the fulfillment of Jeremiah's earlier warnings of judgment. However, amidst the devastation, a glimmer of hope emerges in the story of King Jehoiakim, a descendant of David. Despite being a captive, he receives favor from the king of Babylon, who invites him to dine at the royal table for the rest of his life. This concluding narrative serves as a reminder of Jeremiah's promises of hope and reaffirms God's steadfast commitment to his people and the promise of a future king from the line of David. While the book of Jeremiah contains numerous warnings and judgments, its final words resonate with hope for the future, encapsulating the overarching message of the book. Thank you so much for joining us on this deep dive into the book of Jeremiah. If you've enjoyed this exploration, don't forget to hit that like button and also subscribe to our channel for more in-depth discussions on biblical texts, history, and culture. We'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. What aspects of Jeremiah resonate with you the most? Do you find the themes of judgment and hope relevant in today's context? Share your insights and let's continue this conversation.